Let me just start by saying as a reminder, we live in a supernatural world. A world that is populated not only by human beings, but by supernatural beings. The Christian life is not a boring life. God has given us a supernatural existence that he's called every believer to. Your life is designed to not only take into account the things we can see, but the things we cannot see. God has equipped you with supernatural power, that you and I, through the power of the Holy Spirit can pray, with great effect and miracles can happen in Jesus' name. It's exciting to see that happen, to watch things happen that would not have happened any other way. It's supernatural, and then to think in terms of angelic beings, and to understand that throughout the Bible, not just in one book, not just in one section of the Bible, but throughout the whole Bible, from the beginning to the end, you find angelic beings. You have them interacting with human beings. What does this tell us? It tells us that this is what God intends life to be like in many respects. That this is the norm. That you and I live a supernatural life. And that angels regularly interact with human beings. But the Bible warns us. We can be tempted to worship angels. To pray to angels and to become fascinated with them. And this is something scripture cautions us against. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 2. Do not let anyone who delight in some false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notion. He's lost connection with the head. You have to be careful when you have somebody who's constantly telling you about all their angelic interactions. Be careful, don't believe it. Don't get caught up in that because that person really has lost their connection with Jesus. So on the one hand, while we need to know about angels, while it's important for us to understand the supernatural world, we also have to understand that there are many things we need to be weary about, and we have to focus on the main things. Angels then are not the main thing. Angels are simply ministering spirits in the words of Hebrews 1.14, who are sent to help those who have been called to inherit salvation. At the same time, angels are very active, active in heaven, active in our lives, and it is important to know what the Bible says about them and what they do. Angels worship God. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 we read, Then I looked again and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne, worshipping the Lord and we are worshipping with them. Another amazing truth that the Bible mentions about angels. They are warriors. They are fighters. Psalm 103 says this, Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones. They've distinguished themselves in battle who carry out his plans listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Why do you need armies? You only need armies if you're fighting battles. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. Then there was a war in heaven. Michael, he's one of the archangels, one of two archangels mentioned in the Bible and his angels fought against the dragon. That's Satan and his angels. Angels protects us. One of the great Psalms, Psalm 91, says this. For he that's God will order his angels to protect you. They're actually shielding you. They're helping you. They're watching over you. Angels observe us and angels are watching us. You say for what purpose? Well, in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12 here it's talking about prophets talking about the gospel and the Holy Spirit sent from heaven and angels long to look into these things. So angels are very curious about salvation. They surely wonder how is it that a person who is a sinner is able to be redeemed, because as far as we know, angels cannot be redeemed. In Acts 5 we read an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail and brought them out and he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of light. And that's what they did. The angel gave them direction. And in Acts chapter 8 verse 26, it reads, but as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down to the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. And he did. Does the Holy Spirit speak to people in the book of Acts? Yes. Does Jesus speak to people in the book of Acts? And do angels speak to people in the book of Acts? Yes. I'm just simply saying God speaks in a variety of ways. One of the ways God speaks is through angelic beings. It shouldn't surprise us if that happens. What else does angels do for us? Angels strengthen us. An angel obviously strengthened Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We read this in Luke 22 and verse 43. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So angels can give you strength. In fact, let me just say this to you. Angels can appear to you and look like an angel. Or they can appear to you and look like a person. And I think it's reasonable to assume any time the saints of God gather there are angels. And there are angels who you cannot see and very likely angels that you can't. 
angels can appear to us without us knowing it. But more and more often in these final days God pulls the curtain back to say, Listen, you're going through all these things and you don't understand. You've forgotten that there's a battle around you that is happening, and it's very, very fierce and I'm letting you simply see what you're up against. I don't know what you need from the Lord, but I do know that the Lord will provide it. You don't have to ask for him to send you an angel. I'm just saying he might choose to do that. He might send a friend. He might send a stranger. He might speak to you with his own voice. He might speak to you through the word or he might send the angel that was watching over you all this time to strengthen you, to comfort you, to protect you, to direct you, to encourage you. The point is this. The supernatural world is real. Angels are real. The Bible is real. And what the Bible says about angels and what the Bible says about demons, heaven and hell, it's all very, very real. Thank you for watching. May the Lord go with you this week in all that you do.